Good morning, good evening, bonjour, bonsoir, grazie mille Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Developer X Live Conference Day 2. Hope you have enjoyed day one yesterday. Some of you may know me. For those that don't, I am Jean-Michel Pitet, Vice President of Engineering for Adobe Experience Manager, and been leading this experience product since 2001, so almost 20 years. I also wrote two internet standards, and I'm an Apache committer. Notice, experience in creating, not just using open standards and open source. As an engineering leader, I am thrilled to provide you with a look behind the scenes, sharing some of the insights and our strategies on the innovation around AEM and its move to the cloud. It may be interest to you and describing the major changes leading to where we are today. We are a leader in the experience industry for years and years. But I asked myself, is good good enough? So I took a step back and reflected. How can we do better? I looked around, I saw the car manufacturing industry and inspiration hit on a, one of the megatrends. In the beginning, every car was handcrafted. Next stage, you see the 50s, you have a lots of automation, but still a lot of manual work. And where did that go? Full automation. Aha. Uh -huh. So we innovated again. We dug in. We reimagined the entire customer experience, embedding automation, best practice, artificial intelligence, the second megatrend, into the core of the product. We simplified, leveraged our open source and open standards philosophy, maintained the ability for customization, so continuing the, uh, to enable you to, as developers and partners, to customize thousands of brands, but now leveraging a single platform. And here is where we are. The industry first enterprise class, intelligent content infrastructure, powering experiences from website to mobile, to interactive screens, to headless, to internet of things, to physical, while keeping all of AEM's ability to build and customize. We did what was said impossible to do. Doing what analysts and partners alike tell us and tell me has not been done in the industry before. This results in the state of the art of content management, which we deliver through Adobe Experience Manager as a cloud service. So you can help brands bring their most ambitious customer experience streams to life, fast and easy, always on. That means zero downtime, no maintenance window, front end, never in the past, back end, not now, no maintenance window, just speed, zero stop and go. Always up to date. How much did brands last enterprise upgrade cost? Always up to date means you can use that budget for creating even better experiences, more personalization, more segmented, more omni-channel, unprecedented opportunity for you and value for our customers. Always perfect scale, ah, cloud native, automatically scaling up and scaling down, perfect performance resiliency, secure by default. It's the fastest possible way to get any reactive or uh, reactive or proactive security changes and fixes into the product. I talked about the second megatrend, intelligence, Adobe Sensei, intelligent microservices are included in the core. For example, a much more performant asset ingestion service, integrating Adobe Sensei latest research, technologies like smart tagging, smart cropping, just to name a few. Now, a question I received from a peer of yours uh, about the cloud service. Will the new world be capable enough for the enterprise? That means, will Adobe Experience Manager as a cloud service, being simple, be flexible enough to deal with the complex enterprise requirements? Good question. I'm proud that we are able to maintain AEM's extensibility. Let me give you a view behind the scenes how we've done this. Let's take a deeper look. If you look at it, it's actually a continuous flow. So I have to pick somewhere to start, but you'll see it'll be a flow. Let's start at the moment of time when there is a new AEM build. Think about a new version. That would be step A through D. Now the question ask, is this AEM version a good one? Low or zero risk? For that, we now come to have step D, the RV, the release validator. 
The release validator finds the answer by cloning a set of end customer systems, including their code configuration, everything. Rebuild the end systems with a new AEM version candidate and the customer code. Validate those end systems, including all of their tests. The release validator uses the evergreen as a service. Applying hundreds and thousands of quality gates, allowing for only green releases to come out. So one could say always green or evergreen. Interesting and unique in the industry is this feedback loop. Look at number J. If the release valid validator indicates a slightest risk, AIM release goes back to the developers with the context of the recent change set. If the release validator does not detect any issues, we have a release candidate. Here comes the release orchestrator. So now, with a greener than greener, the release orchestrator will deliver this perfect release candidate to customers. Dev stage prods. Only once a workday, except on Friday. For cloud service, this enables us to actually uh, get innovations out instead of thousands of days that we had number of days. So on average, we had about 2.5 releases a week with no risk correlation to the uptime of publisher or author. Fun fact, in production, we are monitoring any changes in about 100,000 monitors. They're firing every 60 seconds. So if any of those light up, we immediately know. You can get access to this pipeline through the Cloud Manager offering. With that, I'd like to welcome Diana, software development engineer from our Cloud Manager team in Bucharest to illustrate the common Cloud Manager pipeline flows. Diana, thank you for coming and over to you. Um, thank you. Hi, everyone. So some of you are already familiar with Cloud Manager. It's a tool that we released more than a year ago. It allows you to manage your AM environments and perform deployments, especially for AM Cloud service. I will show you today how you can quickly configure a running AM project. To access Cloud Manager, I'm logged here in my browser in Adobe Experience, click on Experience Manager, and then click on Launch. I have already created a program. I can easily create another one by clicking on the top right corner. Um, depending on how my development process looks like, I can easily create more environments or create um, new pipelines. To push custom code, all I need to do is click here on Manage Git. The system will give me instructions on how to generate credentials and some Git instructions for getting the code. To deploy new code, all I need to do is click here on Build and start a new pipeline execution. I will switch now to a production setup. This is a program that we have been using for a while now. To configure the pipeline, I can click here on Edit. I can see all the branches and in the Environment tab, I see the deployment trigger and some other configurations. This CICD pipeline can be used by customers to deploy their own code, start a new execution, and it is also used by Adobe to update the underlying AM application. In this activity tab, there are all the execution details. One of the key information in this screen is the AM release version. Every six hours or so in a continuous automated process, a new AM validation starts. As Jean-Michel presented, the changes are initially grouped by module, assets, sites, and so on. Each module has a specific set of tests, unit tests, functional tests, security, performance, load, the usual. Next, multiple modules are assembled. At this point, we are running the candidate release on complete test environments. The goal here is to validate the system end-to-end -to, -end to ensure performance and availability. Finally, real customer stage environments are cloned. These clones are updated to the candidate release. We run a series of tests using machine learning algorithms to identify pre and post update differences. This last validation generates a score. Now the release is either marked unsafe or it's safe and becomes publicly available. We use a canary approach to push the new version to customers. Initially, Cloud Manager updates a set of internal environments, and if everything is okay, the new release is pushed to all the production pipelines. Let's open an execution and see how it looks like. 
we can see how Cloud Manager enforces a set of validations and automated tests before and after the stage deployment. For example, we can view here the test coverage. In case of an AM update, if some of the tests fail, we do a rollback, but this doesn't happen very often. Last year, we successfully pushed two or three releases every week. You have seen in this demo how a program looks like and how to start your CI CD deployment using Cloud Manager. That's all from my side. Handing back to Jean Michel. Excellent. Thank you very much, Diana. So if you have not, make sure you get your hands on a cloud service sandbox and see for yourself. Also, a related session, custom functional tests for safer CI CD pipelines, will take place later today. I encourage you to see. And remember, it's not about CI CD, it's about the opinionatedness. It's an opinionatedness that we are feeding day by day as we are learning over the thousands of experiences. So do take a look at it. I think we are will be better building much better experiences for our customer. Now, I do want to draw your attention to another exciting development where you can add value as a developer. We have the traditional way of working with AEM. You know, the templates, the components, uh, Sling extension, OSGI, server-side rendering, etc. Recently, we extended the headless API for raw content access. The headless approach, this headless op uh, option in combination with a cloud service leads to the serverless development approach. Serverless, it means you don't have to deal with the servers. Obviously there are servers, but for you, it is like serverless. Together with the SPA editor, this makes up what we think is the best approach, a hybrid content management approach allowing for the right combination in the right moment of time and bring them both together, as you can see on this diagram. Hopefully, you've seen the headless session at this conference, yesterday's GraphQL with content fragments. If not, make sure to take a look at the recording to see what the latest developments are there and how you can start leveraging those innovations. And finally, an offering for you front-end and back-end developers, the AEM core components, which Gabriel mentioned yesterday, always in open source. Remember cloud service, the more testing we have, the safer we, are, we all are, and you easily can customize and extend those components. They create JSON for headless outputs. They have built-in accessibility. This is just one example on how we are enabling you to help our customers go live with experiences faster, help you focus on making those experiences even more exceptional and spend the additional time and budget for more personalized, more omnichannel experiences. Together, I am convinced that we are uh, can build exceptional, more and more exceptional experiences. Okay, let me wrap up this point. I've shared with you some of our thinking towards the cloud with AEM as a cloud service. How we make the impossible possible, how we engineered a considered impossible problem into reality up in production. And the value it creates for you as a developer. We invite you to join us in this exciting journey. There's so much more to say here. Make sure you leverage day two of the conference to get a deeper insight firsthand from the AEM experts and to lively engage with us and them during the conference period. Thanks for listening and have a splendid day. I know these are trying times. I love it that we can spend it in a virtual mode here. For that, thank you, Diana. Thanks everybody for watching. Again, have a splendid day number two. Merci, tschüss, bye-bye, au revoir.